Okay, here's another problem on the work kinetic energy theorem. And in this case, we'll have a block which is moving up a ramp and slowing down as it goes up. Uh, in another problem that I've posted, we saw a similar scenario, but where the block was moving down the ramp and speeding up as it went. So here's our picture. We have a block being launched up this ramp. This is a 12, oh, excuse me, 16 degree angle. 16 degrees. Okay, there's my 16 degree angle. And my block is being launched up this ramp and it's got some initial speed, right? 17.2 meters per second. And our task is to find how far up the ramp does it travel? What's the distance up the ramp that it moves? And there's one last thing we know, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0, 0.0 815. Now this is another problem where we have to write down, the first thing to do is write down the work kinetic energy theorem. And of course, instead of saying the net work equals delta Ke, we skip to the step where we plug in for the net work, F net D cos theta equals final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy like that. And <clears throat> of course in any problem, I said this in another video, but in any problem where the net force is causing the block or the object to slow down, in any such problem cosine of theta is going to yield negative one. Right Now in this case the block is moving up but as it does it's being slowed by a net force pulling it down the ramp. So the only two options in the work kinetic energy theorem, the only two options are that cosine of theta becomes 1 or it becomes negative 1. And it becomes 1 if the object is speeding up. It becomes negative 1 if the object is slowing down. Okay? So the cosine of theta, well, you look and you see F net will be down the ramp. The distance traveled will be up. So that's a 180 degree angle. And the cosine of 180, if you plug in 180 here, the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So you could just write negative F net D, and that takes care of cosine theta, theta. So what I'll actually do is I'll rewrite that. I'll convey this by doing this. Negative F net D, and I know it's a negative because our block is slowing down as it moves up the ramp. Okay, the net force on the block. Well, we know from our ramp problems that there will be a friction force pulling down along with a uh, along with a component of the weight right so fk pulls down the ramp and in addition the x the tilted x component or the parallel component of the weight and to avoid confusion let me call it gravity the gravity force fg the x component of the gravity force pulls this block down the ramp as well. And since the final velocity is zero, this whole term is zero, big zero. And on the right side, we have one half mv initial squared. All right, for fk, we can plug in the equation we know, mu, that there's a better mu, it's mu mg times the cosine of theta, where theta is this angle, 16. That's the equation we know for kinetic friction on a ramp. And also pulling down is the x component of weight, which is mg sine theta. And of course, we really mean the tilted x component. OK, there we are. That's our equation. The first thing you see is that the mass cancels. There's a mass in every single term. So you can cancel it out. Right? We're solving for d, the distance. So we can go ahead and, uh, whoops, I've left off my negative sign, right? This is minus 1 half mvi squared. You see that the negative cancels. So this negative sign here on the left cancels with this negative sign here. And we're solving for the distance. Right, so we might as well just go ahead and plug in values if that's how you like to solve. So we have 0.0815 times 
times 9.81 cos 16 plus 9.81 times sine 16 times d equals vi squared. And of course, vi, we know from the givens, from the problem, vi is 17.2, like that. So from here, it's a pretty straightforward process. Let me make sure that this says 16. It's a pretty straightforward process to solve for the unknown for d. You take 17.2 squared, and you divide by this whole thing here. And what do we get when we do that? We get 17.2 squared over, open parentheses, 0 0.0815 times 9.81 cos 16 plus 9.81 sine 16. And enter. Wow, that's a pretty big distance. Oops. I'm getting the distance equal to 85.2. And of course, that just becomes 85 meters with sig figs. That's a pretty big distance. Well, it was launched pretty fast, 17.2. And it's not a very steep incline. 16 degrees isn't so steep. So that's reasonable. So you know, that would take uh, not too long. If it's starting at 17.2, it wouldn't take so long to go 85 meters. So that sounds pretty good, pretty reasonable. So what I want to do briefly is just remind everyone, if we look, look at this. The net force, I'm going to draw the block and show the two forces on the block, show our free body diagram since I skipped that step earlier. We're all very comfortable and familiar now with drawing the forces on a block that's on a ramp, but here's, here are the forces. I've got my block like this, gravity pulls down, FG, and of course it has an X component, I'm just going to write X now. There's friction, FK, there's a y component to the gravity force, there's the normal force, and that's it. So you look and you see, okay, there's a better block, there's a better free body diagram. So the y component of the gravity force is like that, the tilted x component of the gravity force is down the ramp, and then there's kinetic friction down the ramp, the normal force points off. Now the normal force cancels with the y component of weight, and because the gravity force has been broken into components, we could take that out of our diagram. So the only remaining net force, so these are taken care of, this is taken care of, the only remaining net force is the friction force plus the x component of weight, which is what this shows here. And just as a reminder, when we add these together, even though they point down the ramp, we don't make them negative. This negative sign came from the cosine of 180, right? What we actually plugged in here is a positive F net, and we do it because work is a scalar, so we have to plug in our net force as a scalar, which means you take the absolute value, you leave off any sign indicating the direction. So you just plug in positive values, which is what we did, despite the fact that they point down the ramp. The negative simply shows that the net force is in the opposite direction as D. It doesn't show that the net force is pulling in the negative direction, it just shows that F net and D point in opposite directions. Good.